to have violent crime that is targeting people because of who they are, of their backgrounds, that is something the FBI is going to investigate with our partner. We do not tolerate it. We make it a high priority, and we're doing our best to put a stop to it. FBI 将仇恨犯罪定义为全部或部分以罪犯对种族、宗教、残疾、性取向或者是性别认同的偏见为动机的刑事犯罪。而联邦调查局的年度报告呢，常被广大执法部门、政策制定者、专家和社区领袖用作于美国仇恨犯罪的广泛衡量标准。但也有部分专家认为，光是靠 FBI 的统计，完全没有办法反映全美各地的针对亚裔的真实的仇恨情况。专家们认为说，美国的反亚裔仇恨犯罪数量的下降是多种因素所导致，例如煽动性的言论减少、美国人疲于上报等等。但这种下降情况是周期性模式的一种反应，可能不是长期的。在今晚的仇恨边缘当中，我们为大家邀请到是旧金山地区 Special Agent in Charge Mr. Robert Trump 来到我们节目当中，一块来欢迎他。各位朋友，晚安！在今天的节目当中，我们请到一位重量级的嘉宾，他是一位 FBI 哦，我们一块来隆重介绍他，就是 Special Agent in Charge Mr. Robert Trump， 一块来欢迎他。Hello, Mr. Trump. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for joining our show today, and、uh, Happy New Year first. Happy New Year to you as well. Yeah. I first of all, I believe our many viewers might be curious about the FBI's role. So before、sure. we jump into our topic, could you please、uh, tell us a little bit about what the FBI really does for our viewers? Of course. Thank you very much for having me.、Uh, the FBI has a very simple mission:、um, we keep our communities safe and we uphold the Constitution.、Uh, the difficult part for the FBI is that first part: keeping our communities safe. Because there are so many threats out there.、Mm -hmm. um, certainly,、um, violent crime is something that we face. Financial crime, fraud, cyber crime. There are a whole variety of threats that affect people here in the Bay Area、mm -hmm. and around the country. And it's our job to keep them safe. And it's so important that we do it in a constitutionally sound manner.、Mm -hmm. So we're always looking to uphold the Constitution as well. I see. Also, we know you are in charge in San Francisco FBI division. Yes. So. Uh, could you please、uh, tell us a little bit about your FBI background, or maybe highlight some key experiences that have shaped your career? Sure, I'd be happy to.、Uh, I'd love to.、Um, I've worked for the FBI for more than 25 years,、wow. um, and I have to say it has been a wonderful experience for me because I love the mission of the FBI, and、um, you know, keep our community safe is our mission.、Um, I am part of the community, and so it's keeping me and my family safe for one. But it's also given me a chance to、um, get to know people that I've worked with and get to know people that I've lived next to my neighbors. I've been assigned to several different fields. Offices over my career,、uh, I started off in the St. Louis field office in Missouri, but I've also been assigned to offices in Sacramento and Washington D.C. And I、uh, am incredibly happy and blessed to be here in San Francisco.、Um, I do want to share experiences that、um, had a very big impact on me.、Mm -hmm. One was early in my career when I、um, I had a financial fraud investigation. Somebody was the victim of a scammer、mm -hmm. that was based overseas.、Um, this person lost a lot of money,、um, more than a hundred thousand dollars. For the FBI. A、um, hundred thousand dollar loss is really not that large. We deal in multi-million dollar losses, but for this person, that was everything he had saved in his entire life.、Mm -hmm. His life, as far as he could see, was ruined、um, because he was the victim of a crime. And I spent a lot of time with that person.、Um, I saw the pain that he went through, and that truly inspired me.、Um, it made me dedicate myself.、Um, To going against the people that are victimizing、mm -hmm. um, people in our communities. So,、um, seeing firsthand the impact of crime on victims, that had a huge impact on me. A very good developmental experience for me.、Mm. So, you mentioned about <coughs> the keep the community safe, right? Yes. So, what's different between FBI and the police? That's a great question.、Um, so, the FBI is a federal agency, and、mm -hmm. we are responsible for enforcing. 
federal statutes. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, federal criminal statutes um, involving um, crimes that involve some kind of an interstate nexus. Um, but sometimes those interstate crimes can have a very local impact. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we have a lot of gang investigations. Um, gangs invariably have contacts out of the state, and that gives us the authority to investigate. So anytime there's an interstate nexus, that's where the FBI gets involved. Mm -hmm. um, the state police, mm -hmm. um, police agencies and local police uh, here in San Francisco, um, they enforce state crimes, state statutes, and very often those involve direct interpersonal crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that there is a lot of overlap um, between state crimes and federal crimes, and that gives us a chance to collaborate very closely um, with our state and local partners. Mm -hmm. So in that case happened, uh, how do you guys cooperate together? Um, so when a crime happens that involves both a potential federal violation and a potential state violation, mm -hmm. um, we know who to call. Um, we'll call, um, for example, here in San Francisco, we've yeah. got great contacts with the city police, and they know to call us. In addition to that, we have um, task forces that are jointly staffed. Um, in the FBI, we are very pleased to have um, San Francisco Police Department personnel on our crime task forces, mm -hmm. and that makes the cooperation so much more effective. Cool. So we've got very good, um, very good process in place to cooperate on those matters. Mm -hmm. Our focus today is the stop hate and uh, public safety. So considering the rise in the hate incident against the API community, yes. Yes. So, so what's your opinion on this troubling trend? It, it, it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of violent crime is, is simply an, an abomination. It's unacceptable. But to have violent crime that is targeting people because of who they are, of their backgrounds, that to me is completely unacceptable. And it runs right against what the FBI stands for. For that reason, um, prosecuting, investigating hate crime is a very high priority for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mm -hmm. um, here in the Bay Area, unfortunately, we know all too well that hate crime is a part of what is out there. Um, I know members of the AAPI communities are facing discrimination and hate on a daily basis. And um, when this crosses the line and involves some kind of a violation of the law, that is something the mm. FBI is going to investigate with our partners um, very aggressively. We do not tolerate it. We make it a high priority, and we're doing our best to put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. Is this issue driven by stereotype or other reasons? Every um, crime yeah. um, is an individual crime, and criminals have motives that are specific to themselves. Some people have in their minds this hatred that is based on, um, that person is different from me. Mm -hmm. They're a different race. They're a different religion. They look different from me. They talk different from me, and I hate that. And that is their motivation. Uh, we are seeing different motivations that are also biased against groups. Mm -hmm. um, some people, as you said, do have a stereotype. Um, they say, oh, that person, um, that person is Chinese. They're not going to, for example, they're not going to fight back. So they have these um, perverted notions in their head that all people are alike, and I'm going to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that we do, we have learned in investigating hate crime is that each criminal has a slightly different motivation. We almost don't care what the motivation is, because if they willfully do something based on a protected characteristic, for example, um, race, national origin, religion, sexual orientation, that's a, that's a crime. That's a violation of federal law, and that's a violation of state law. And we're going to in investigate it very aggressively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's take a break from here. I believe our viewers need more time to rethink what we just discussed. Very good. And for the next segment, we can talk about the scam. This okay. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
当涉及仇恨事件和犯罪时，公众经常看到警察或地方检察官的回应。那 FBI 在什么样的情况下会介入调查？另外，各种诈骗已经遍及不同族裔的社群当中，我们又应该如何防范呢？继续为大家邀请到的是 FBI Special Agent in Charge Mr. Robert Trump 来到我们节目当中，再次欢迎他。Thank you for joining us again. Yeah, so the public will see often see police or DA responding. So what kind of situations uh, will FBI step in, and uh, what role do you play? This raises a very good point. In California, there is a lot of overlap between um, state hate crime statutes mm -hmm. and federal hate crime statutes. So the same incident can prompt a response from both the FBI and from the local police department, depending on what the jurisdiction is. And that is fine. Um, it's not a competition. Um, we look to work together to best use our resources. So if there is a serious um, hate crime incident, mm -hmm. for example, if um, a, somebody was um, violently attacked, it could very well happen that both the FBI and the police department would respond. What we would do is we would work together. Um, we would lend our resources mm -hmm. um, where it made sense. Um, the FBI has, um, we're very well funded in terms of collecting evidence. We've got um, a lot of resources to do um, investigative work. And we will um, do our job, we'll collect evidence, we'll interview people in coordination with the local department so we're not um, duplicating efforts. Um, at the end of the day, after um, we've investigated an incident, um, we'll confer with um, the prosecutors. On the state side, you've got a local district attorney, and on our side, we have the U.S. Attorney's Office. And the U.S. Attorney's Office will talk with the district attorney to decide where it makes most sense to take that prosecution. Mm -hmm. So we've got evidence collected both by a police department and by the FBI. That can be used in state court, and it can also be used in federal court. Um, what we ask the public is don't feel you have to um, know who's the best person to call, a local police department or the FBI. Um, we'll figure that out. We'll work that out because we already are. We're already talking with the police departments. Mm -hmm. Most important thing, if people feel they're in danger, they really need to call 911. Yes, yes. You know, for, for us, the FBI is kind of a mystery, you know. <laughs> yes. But today, you leave us know more FBI. So, yeah, I believe our viewers got a lot of information. So let's talk about scam, sure. so, which has been a very serious issue in many communities. Absolutely. So which type of scam is more common in the API community? Unfortunately, they're all very common. Wow. Um, any um, type of scam where somebody tries to build confidence with the victim, that we are seeing um, being directed toward the AAPI community. Um, if there's a common element, it's um, we're seeing a tendency to go after um, older victims. Um, mm -hmm. We call that um, elder fraud, and we are in fact seeing a lot of elder fraud that's targeting the AAPI community. Um, but unfortunately, um, the specific techniques, the specific types of scams um, are as varied as you can imagine. Um, we do see a lot of romance scams mm -hmm. where people pretend to be somebody they're not. They'll, um, for example, if they're targeting um, elderly men, they'll pretend to be um, a very beautiful young woman who wants to have a relationship. Unfortunately, um, there is no beautiful young woman. It, very often, these are run by organized groups that are based overseas. Um, and they are targeting specific communities. Um, they are targeting um, Mandarin speakers, Cantonese speakers. They are purposefully um, targeting members of the AAPI community. They're using the same techniques that they use in all of their scams to build that trust and to get victims here to send money. So we know as you, uh, there are many scams from like uh, international. Yes. Yeah. So how FBI deal with this international criminal? Th this is a great question because anytime you have something crossing a border, that makes it um, more difficult. Um, so there are two problems that international scams mm -hmm. cause for us. One is collecting evidence, mm -hmm. and the other is getting our hands on the criminals. Um, so for collecting evidence, the FBI, we have a number of um, offices that are overseas. Um, and those people, those FBI agents who work overseas, have a fantastic working relationship with local police departments. And they use that relationship 
to help get us information to help identify who the criminals are. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to those relationships, um, we also have international legal process. Um, we use mutual legal assistance treaties um, that build upon relationships between governments to get us evidence that we can use in court. And we need that evidence because we cannot um, uh, file charges or extradite somebody without that overseas evidence. But thanks to the relationships and thanks to um, the legal process, we can make that happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the hard part, if I, I'm sorry to um, uh, just make this point, but the hard part can often be um, getting a hold of those people, arresting them and extraditing them. But again, the relationships that we have based upon our, we call them legal attaches, mm -hmm. um, our FBI agents overseas, they will work with local agencies based in whatever country to go out and to make those arrests and start the process to get those criminals here in U.S. courts. Oh, okay. So it's take a, like a long process or? It can be a long process, but we can move very quickly um, if circumstances are dire. Mm -hmm. So do you have any suggestion for our audience, how do we prevent this kind of scam? I, I sure do. The best line of defense is to be just a little bit cautious. Um, a lot of these scams start with an unsolicited phone call, an unsolicited email, or a wrong number text. If anybody receives um, unsolicited contact, please, um, we urge people to be very careful about interacting with people that way. If you initiate that contact yourself, you're much more likely to avoid being victimized. So at the beginning, how do we know it's kind of scam? Um, if somebody you don't know tries to give you money, it's a scam okay. because there is no free money. Yes. Um, you shouldn't have to pay money to get money. Mm -hmm. And very often these scams, they start off with um, some kind of a, a casual contact, the conversation will turn to money, and somebody who is really a stranger to the victim is offering the victim a chance to get money. And all the victim has to do is to pay a little bit of money. Well, that's a scam. Mm -hmm. You do not, um, strangers are not gonna offer you money. If a stranger knew how to get you rich, they would be rich themselves. And if they try to um, get money from you, they're just trying to take your money. We really got a one lesson. Thank you <laughs> yes. so much. Yes. Let's take a break from here, okay? Sure. Okay. 好，那我们先稍微休息一下之后呢，在广告过后呢，还有很多的话题要请问我们今天的来宾。马上回来。不论是诈骗或者是仇恨犯罪，受害者都倾向选择沉默、息事宁人。那从 FBI 的角度来看，又会如何鼓励这些受害者勇敢站出来发出自己的声音呢？继续为大家邀请到的是旧金山的 Special Agent in Charge Mr. Robert Trump 来到我们节目当中，我们再次的欢迎他。So let's talk about the victim part. So no matter a victim of a hate crime or scam, most of people believe speaking up doesn't won't make a difference. So do you have any suggestion to them to inspire them? Um, I, I certainly do. I understand people are reluctant to contact the FBI, to contact law enforcement, especially if um, they come from overseas and are just here visiting or just here for a short term. Um, the FBI and your local police department, we don't care where you're from. Mm -hmm. If you have been a victim of a crime, we want victims to know that we are here to help them. Um, the FBI and all of our local partners take a very victim-centric approach to how we, um, how we address crime problems. And the safety of the victim is our number one priority. Um, I often encourage people to think of both themselves and to think of others. Um, if they don't contact authorities, if they've been a victim of a crime, we can't help them. So mm -hmm. that is thinking of themselves. And if we don't know, that a certain area or a certain issue is a problem, we're not gonna be able to devote resources to it. So if people come forward and tell us their stories, we will be able to help others. So it is truly a selfless act. It's a wonderful act for the community if victims do come forward because we need that information to do our jobs effectively. Mm. So when we have like a scam, this issue, or maybe like hate crime, can we call FBI directly? You absolutely can. 
Um, you can contact the FBI in a number of different ways. Um, we have a toll-free number, 1-800-C-A-L-L-F-B-I, or mm -hmm. call FBI. And people can also report crimes online at mm -hmm. tips.fbi.gov. And we do have services available for non-English speakers. Wow. And I know that's important to yes. um, the audience um, to be able to um, interface with the FBI. FBI.gov has resource materials available in multiple languages, mm -hmm. including um, Chinese language. Chinese, yeah. Yes. Um, and I will say this, that in the Bay Area, um, we have been fortunate to work with a number of incredibly devoted um, community groups um, representing AAPI community groups who have um, gone above and beyond to make information available in multiple languages. And certainly um, they can address people um, in Cantonese and Mandarin, in, in um, Tagalog, in, in many languages um, spoken in the AAPI communities here in San Francisco. Good, good, good. Uh, I have an extra question about uh, hate crime. Yes. I read about the uh, percentage of hate crimes going down recently. Is true or not? Because the, the resources from FBI. Uh, one of the jobs of the FBI, our Criminal Justice Information Services Division, is to track statistics. Mm. And the most recent statistics have shown a slight decrease in hate crime. Mm -hmm. um, I want to point out that our statistics are only as good as the data we collect. Okay. And not all departments are reporting hate crime statistics. Mm -hmm. um, so while hate crimes may be um, dropping slightly, um, the true number could be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So that's one issue. The other issue I'd point out is that um, even though the most recent quarter did show a decline, and that is certainly good news, um, it is at a historically high level. And um, that is something. Um, I'm concerned about. Um, frankly, any incident of mm -hmm. a hate crime is one too many, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately we have far more than just one or two incidents. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to 2024, does yeah. FBI right now offer any public education focus on scam or hate crime awareness? This part? We, we certainly do. We've got a number of online resources at FBI.gov, mm -hmm. um, which educates the public about what to look out for and how to protect yourselves from hate crime and certainly from financial crimes as well. Mm. Um, one thing that I would mention is that we have one more way to report financial crimes. Mm -hmm. It's our Internet Crime Complaint Center and it's um, IC3.gov, the letter I, the letter C, the number 3.gov. Mm -hmm. IC3.gov has ways for people that have very recently sent money to scammers to recover that. Mm -hmm. um, the key um, issue is that it has to be reported quickly. Mm -hmm. If somebody has wired money overseas, if that's reported within 24 to 48 hours, there's a good chance that we might be able to recover that money before it's gone forever, but it has to be reported quickly. Mm -hmm. The last question of today, yeah, so do you have any advice to our audience about protecting themselves in the coming years? Um, be cautious about unsolicited contacts. Do not share personal information with strangers mm -hmm. and um, know who you're dealing with. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the thing that we have to do with the thing that we Thank you for coming today. Yeah, I hope we can see you soon and interview with you again. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy. 人身安全问题是我们最担忧也是最关心的问题，受害情况让人震惊。而我们掌握的数据只是冰山一角，缺乏足够的数据指标，对美国政府应对压力。感谢大家对仇恨边缘的关注，记得扫描二维码就可以在天下卫视 YouTube 官方频道上面重温往期节目。